Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO. The WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. My guest today on Sports Files is Major League Baseball pitcher Jason Mott. <laughs> It may be the so-called off-season in Major League Baseball, but that doesn't mean it's downtime for Jason Mott. In fact, just the opposite. Less than two weeks ago, Jason and his wife, Caitlin, once again played host to the annual Jason Mott Foundation Gala, which raises money and spreads awareness about cancer. It's the Mott's attempt to strike out the disease, and it was another huge success. Jason is also officially a free agent and will be shopping his talents around the league. Mott has spent his entire career with the Cardinals, but there is no guarantee that he winds up back in St. Louis. Today, Jason joins me to talk about his future, his foundation, and his fallen teammate, Oscar Tavares. And it's all next on Sports Files. Jason, great to have you back on the show this year. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. Appreciate it. I know last year when we talked, it was before you had the Jason Mott Foundation Gala. This time, it's after. It just happened a short time ago. How did everything go for you? Uh, everything was great. Uh, we actually had uh, the biggest attendance we've had in the past three years, so that was good. Uh, it's expanding, so that's, uh, that's always a good thing. Um, you know, it was a, uh, it was a good time. Uh, we had a bunch of people out there. Uh, we had a couple. We did a couple things different this year. We had a uh, couple, couple of kids from uh, the St. Louis area that that, uh, that we have met uh, through the different hospitals and stuff like that. We had uh, we had some of them down, uh, nice. and stuff like that. There, there was a little girl named uh, Ari, uh, Princess Ari. She's like eight, nine years old. She actually uh, she's in a uh, a music program up in St. Louis, and she mm -hmm. actually uh, she sung a song uh, and stuff like that. I think she probably got a better ovation than uh, <laughs> Gary Esco and the uh, the Atomic Dance Machine did out there, but she she, uh, she did a pretty good job. But it was a it was, it was a good event. It was a good time. Yeah, as you said, this continues to grow. You started this just three years ago, and continues to get bigger and bigger as the word gets out. This year, you were nominated for the Roberto Clemente Humanitarian Award. And for those who who don't know about Roberto Clemente, please Google him, look him yeah. up, folks because this is a guy who did so much and tragically died in 1971 trying to bring relief aid to, to his yeah. native Puerto Rico. Um, I think you deserve to win it. I think you'll be nominated in the future for what you do. But just to be a part of that and to be nominated, it's quite the honor, right? Oh, no, it, it, uh, it definitely is. You know, I mean, uh, when I found out uh, that I was nominated, like you said, it was, it was an honor just to be nominated. Uh, you know, there's a guy off each team, and... You look at our ball club uh, in St. Louis, and there's so many different guys do so many different things. So uh, to be one of the guys that was nominated off our team was uh, was definitely an honor in itself. You are wearing one of your famous uh, strikeout cancer shirts. Yes. This has ballooned. This has a life of its own. These shirts. Everyone has them. Um, tell us about the origin, and then we'll make sure that people know if they want to purchase one, how they can get a ha get their uh, hands on one. Um, well, our. Uh our foundation started. My wife's grandfather was diagnosed with uh, lung cancer about one two months before our wedding. Uh, right. He was doing some treatment at the West Clinic uh, here in uh, Memphis, um, and we'd go in there while he was doing his chemo and doing stuff like that. Me and my wife had a simple question of, okay, how can we help? Uh, that question led us to uh, our fundraiser. Uh, then, uh, as far as the T-shirts, uh, there was a uh, there's a company in St. Louis called 108 Stitches, and they reach out to a couple a couple people a year uh, around baseball and make some shirts for them and donate money back to their foundation. Uh, they actually had a shirt that just had a K on it, a backwards K for like pitchers and stuff like that. And I simply went to them and was like, Hey, you know, could you guys uh, put cancer underneath it? So like strike out cancer, which was the name of our event. Uh, we bought about 300 of them to kind of give to friends. We were going to sell it at our event the first year uh, just to kind of, you know, get the word out there and see right. if, you know, we could sell a couple. That'd be great, you know, and help raise some more money for the West Clinic and the Wings Foundation. And uh, 
you know, people saw us wearing them around the clubhouse, uh, doing, you know, interviews and stuff like that with them, and fans were like, where can you get one? So uh, they actually started selling them online, and proceeds were coming back to our foundation. Uh, and then last off season, we, uh, I just started talking to a bunch of uh, bunch of guys around the league. Uh, I talked to guys that I'd played with, guys I'd played against that uh, were always helping us with our event, whether it was signing stuff or getting guys on their team to help us get some auction items and right. uh, stuff like that. So we uh, we reached out to probably about five or six of them. Uh, and then the Major League Baseball Players Association stepped in and was like, man, that is uh, it's awesome what you guys are doing, but we would like to get it uh, like a league-wide thing. And I was like, well, I've kind of reached out to just about everyone I know on different teams that do cancer-related charities and stuff like that. And they're like, well, you know, we can help you out. So between them and me contacting everyone, uh, we now have a guy on every team. Uh, wow. With um, so it's 30 teams. We actually have about 34, 35 guys now. So some teams have have two guys represented. This is actually uh, Logan Morrison with the uh, Seattle Mariners, and his proceeds go towards the um, American Lung Cancer Society um, and stuff like that. So, like I said, we have a guy on every team. Um, so, so the shirt has almost branched out to an extent where each of this of these players mm -hmm. uh, charities are benefit from it. Yes. Not yes. just your foundation. Right, right. I mean and, and that was that was the point of when we when we did all this was okay, how can we help people? We want to help people and getting the shirts out there last year and just the red ones uh, helped our foundation but then when we reached out to other players, we wanted to help more people and help Fantastic. help a cause that they help out and uh, so we actually we, we split the proceeds. Uh, some comes to us some goes to them right. uh, and like so we have stuff everything from the pediatric cancer research foundation to uh we have some susan g coleman we have make-a-wish stuff wow. um alex's lemonade there i mean literally their stuff up like i said we have 35 guys now on board and we actually had a day this year on september 2nd we did it last year in st louis a uh Strikeout Cancer Day at the ballpark. Uh, to, I remember that. To uh, raise awareness for childhood cancer awareness because mm -hmm. in September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. So uh, we were doing a day for that. And I we told the the PA, we're like, hey, you know, we're um, we're going to do another day this year, September 2nd, to uh, bring awareness to childhood cancer again in St. Louis. And uh, Fantastic. Between us and the PA and 108, again, we reached out to guys all around the league. So September 2nd. This year, we actually had a league-wide uh, strikeout cancer day. Uh, so all the guys wore their team shirts to the field. They wore them for BP. Um, they How wore cool them, uh, you know, around the clubhouse and stuff like that, which was, which was pretty cool. Uh, I found out, you know, later and stuff like that. It was one of the, or it was the first time that like a, a player-driven initiative had actually been implemented league-wide. Um, and like I said, I didn't find that out till probably a couple weeks after right. that. It caught on uh, like wildfire. Yeah, I mean, it, it was uh, it, it was crazy, honestly. And I know the day that we had it, September second, uh, 108, uh, the company that makes the t-shirts. Um, I think their site shut down two or three times. They had to get new servers, uh, which is a good problem. Because fans saw what the right. players were doing, right. and they wanted. And, right, and people were tweeting about it. Teams were tweeting about it. Uh, all the guys, all of our. K Cancer guys were tweeting about it. The, like I said, the different teams, MLB was tweeting about it. Right. Uh, and literally, I think I think that day they sold, or a, or I think sold close to sixty-five thousand dollars worth of shirts that day on one day, and that's why their servers shut down. So it's a it's a good problem to have. You know, there there are some negative things about social media, right. but there are a lot of positive things because you yeah. can get the word out so quickly. So so one final thing on on this subject, if people right now watching the show want one of those shirts. How can they get one? Uh, the shirts are available at 108stitches.com, just the number 108stitches.com. Uh, and you can go there. They have uh, the, like Team Up For A Cure, different K-Cancer things you can click on, uh, and you can honestly scroll through and see all the guys. Uh, like I said, you can pick your favorite, your favorite color. Uh, there's everything from the Rockies have a purple one. There's a royal blue sure. and white one for uh, the Royals and the Dodgers. Well, the Cardinals uh, red is, is right. still. Oh, yeah. Well, right, right. But, I mean, I mean, you know, that, that's, that's obviously my favorite. And I think uh, this year we actually had one week um, Anthony Rizzo with the Cubs. Mm -hmm. His shirt outsold ours, and that was the first time that happened. And then uh, Nick Marcakis, who's with the Orioles, his was close to outselling us in the month of September because they were making the playoff push. They were all wearing them. People were seeing them Fantastic. and all the guys. So it was one of those things that they almost outsold us. But, uh, you know, the whole thing is even though we may be 
you know, opponents on the field, all the, you know, everyone has come together for something that's way bigger than the game. And that at the end of the day is what it's all about. Well said. All right. Let's, let's talk about where you are right now. Season's over. You've spent your career with the Cardinals. You're a free agent now. The shoulder, the arm, everything's good. You came back, you pitched last year after coming off the Tommy John. Where are we at now? Just playing the waiting game, I guess. Uh, you know, uh, I've talked a little bit to my agents uh, about some stuff there. Uh, I think they've started talking a little bit to other people uh, with the whole free agent thing going on. Uh, but uh, we'll see. It's just one of those things you just got to uh, kind of sit back and play let it out. Yeah, you just got to let us take its course. Do you want to be a. Uh, I think this is an obvious answer. You want to be a closer again for a team. You don't want to be a setup guy, right? Well, I mean, you know, my thing right now is I want I want to go somewhere. I want to I want to go on a pitch and I want to help a team win. Right. Uh, you know, I feel like um, when I got back this year with the Cardinals, uh, you know, Rosenthal was throwing the ball well in the ninth inning. Mm -hmm. Nishek was doing great. We had Martinez. We had Manis. Choate was throwing the ball well. Uh, Sam Freeman. You know, we had all these guys that were throwing the ball well, and it was tough to kind of get me in uh mm -hmm. and like i said coming back from you know tommy john and stuff like that they're uh not just gonna i think throw you into the fire especially when those guys are throwing the ball so well so for me it's one of those situations where i want to be in a situation where i can go out there and help the ball club win if that's uh if that means going out there and pitching in the eighth inning okay you know if that means you know if it's closing again that's great because i know that's i know i've done that and i know what i can do when i'm in those situations if the cardinals wanted you back. You've spent your career there. It's a great organization, as, as you know, we've talked about before. But they want you as a setup guy. And you got other options to go as a closer. I mean, it's a business. I mean, yeah, well, I mean, you know, that's, that's the thing, too. Like, like you said, if the Cardinals want me. So, I mean, you know, it, it starts with that as well. You know, it, need it, the answer it, to that. Right, question right, right, right. Exactly. But, uh, you know, I mean, I've, I've been in St. Louis uh, for six years, six plus years. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've been with the Cardinals since 03. And this is, you know, literally the only organization I've ever yeah. known. I know that that's, that's rare in baseball in general, especially as a uh, as a reliever. That that doesn't happen very often for a uh, for right, a reliever right. to be in the same spot for six plus years. But uh, you were also at the top of the mountain at yep. times. People remember when you were in um, in good health. You were mm -hmm. one of the best closers there are there there was in baseball. And hopefully you'll get back to that point. Do you feel that you'll be able to get back to? that point or at least close to it yeah I mean I think uh, at the end of the year last year I think I was starting to, uh, starting to show signs of that uh, right. and uh, I think there was a couple times even earlier on probably you know into June July ish that I, I showed some some signs that so I, I I know it's there it's just going out there and uh, it's getting that consistent work mm -hmm. it's going out there and being in those games and like I said I know I know what I can do when I'm in the, the situations that I'm 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 used to being in right. uh, so you know it's just uh, like I said it's a thing of it's a it's an opportunity thing so it's you know it's opportunity going out there and getting a chance to uh, to go out there and pitch and we'll uh, we'll see what happens do you hate the San Francisco Giants no <laughs> no they're uh, man they are they're a machine they're but a it's every ball. other year yeah right? they're a they're a really good ball club um, you know that's that's obvious but uh, man I've uh, the past couple of years I've you know in 12 uh, it was tough you know, right. we went from, you know, winning the World Series to being, you know, one game away from mm -hmm. getting back there and then them coming back and beating us, you know, three in a row is tough. Um, but, uh, you know, last year and this year, you know, I was hurt last year and this year I was on the playoff roster. But just sitting there watching watching these games and watching stuff, you kind of kind of have a better, I don't know if understanding or appreciation for teams. Cause you, I'm literally just sitting there watching these guys and it's like, you know, they, they, these guys go out there, they do things, you know, the right way and they play the game hard and they got some good ball players well one of those good ball players is a guy I'm sure that you admire and I would imagine every pitcher admires is Madison Bumgarner what he does especially in the postseason and then coming back to pitch two days rest in that finale when you were watching that what were you saying to yourself yeah I was you know when uh I think everyone knew he was getting in there no one was sure when. Right. Uh, and, you know, I was I was watching. I think he gave up a hit to the first guy, and then he was just boom, boom, boom. Uh, and I was, like, watching. I was, I was sitting there with my wife. I was like, it's going to be hard to take him out in this ninth inning. Uh, you know, j j just the way he was going out there, and he was attacking hitters. Mm -hmm. He was, you know, elevating the ball. He was moving it in and out. Um, no reason to take him out, but they right. had the fluky play where they ended right. up with a runner on third. Right, exactly. But even with that, you know, they went out there, and he – 
you know, in, in those situations, you go back to, uh, or at least I do, it's you just got to get the guy out to play it out. You right. know, no, nothing right. else matters. It doesn't matter where the runner is, whatever, mm -hmm. one run game, tie game. If there's two outs or whatever, you you make your pitches and you get the guy out to play it out. And point. the ball game's over. He made his pitch and they won. Cardinals organization has had some very high highs and very low lows. They've mm -hmm. had tragedies. They've had World Series championships. You've been around for, for, for some of each. Uh, when you heard the news of, of Oscar Tavares' death at the age of 22, a young budding star in this league, um, what went through your mind? Uh, man, I, even now I'm, I'm still kind of speechless about it because, uh, you know, even when it happened, I, it just kind of was like a numb feeling like, man, like a week ago, you know, when, when I heard the news, you know, I was thinking a week ago I was, I was in St. Louis. We were sitting there talking, messing around, joking about this and that. And uh, you know, I was I was actually at my in-laws' uh, house. We were trying to eat dinner. I think I was just like, I'm good. You know, it's just it's just one of those numbing feelings of uh, you know, it was, it was it's it's horrible. You know, it's it's one of those things. We are uh, we're a family. Right. Um, you know, you're. Uh, I've said it before. We spend more time with these guys on the team than we actually do our own family uh you know we're at the field all day and we're on the road for six seven days while our wife and kids are back in st louis and we're we're, we're with all these people uh you know our teammates you are pull for each other you support exactly. each other so uh you know it was um it was, it was definitely tough and it was you know i know it was tough on all of us and it was tough on the, the cardinal fans i think it was tough on baseball you know what i mean because it uh you know man it puts uh, a lot of stuff in a perspective and let right. uh, let some people know that you know we're n no one's invincible and you know what we are we are people you know uh, and that's it's 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 it was tough well said uh jason our final couple of minutes what's what's the game plan off season now uh, obviously last year was a whole different ball game because you were still rehabbing now that you feel good you're 100 percent uh, you go back to your your pre-injury ritual during the offseason? Uh, yeah, I was actually talking to uh, one of the guys that actually went to the University of Memphis. Uh, he's in the Reds organization. This is like our first normal offseason in a couple offseasons. Right. Uh, you know, so I'm, I've, uh, you know, I got back, took about a week off. That's about as long as I could sit around the house and not really work out. Uh, <laughs> drive so, you crazy. Right, man. drive my wife crazy probably. Uh, but, uh, you know, I started working out, uh, doing some stuff. I'll probably start light tossing, doing some stuff like I normally do, probably December sometime, and then, uh, you know, get into, uh, you know, getting after a little bit more come the beginning of the year. But, uh, yeah, I'm just, um, you know, doing my workouts, doing my stuff to get my get my body ready. So when, when it comes time to play catch and stuff like that, I'm, I'm where I need to be. And one other thing is this is the off season now that you're a free agent, so I'm sure there will be some visits with teams. You'll have to be taking some uh, some trips as well. Yeah, I, yeah, like, like I, I, I have agents. They take care of all that. So if, if they're but you like, eventually have to go somewhere, yeah, right? Yeah, well, right, right. And if it's one of those things like, hey, you're on a flight here, I'll be like, all right, uh, see you there. Exactly. So uh, it's like, like I said, it's part of it. Uh, and I've, I've had a lot of people ask me, about this now, like it's uh, it's it's part of the business. So it is. Um, it is. you just you just like I said, I, I have agents, you know, not for that reason, but kind of for that reason. They uh, let them earn their pay, right? right. They <laughs> they they do a lot of the talking, and uh, you know they know who and what and what what every, what we're looking for and everything. So uh, you know we'll see. I know you go over to the University of Memphis and work out. You've spoken to those young players before. Final minute. What's your word or words of advice for a young pitcher coming up? Man, uh, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not very good at words of advice for pitchers. I could probably do more for catchers. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, um, you know, for uh, for me, pitching wise, I just uh, I try to keep things simple. I know a lot of people try to uh, make things difficult or do this or you got to think about. It. I try to keep things simple. And uh, if you if you're doing your your mound, you're doing your bullpen, you're doing all your stuff you need to do. When you get out there on the mound, all you need to think about is just one pitch at a time and that's that's honestly that's that that's what I do out there and I've talked to different coaches different this and that and uh you know if you talk Keep to it as simple as possible right I mean, I mean you 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 look at a bunch of these major league guys and it's and even like I was saying with, with Bumgarner you had the guy on third base two outs one run game just in, get him out in the world series make your pitch get the guy out so Jason, it's Thank always you. a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank and congratulations on everything with the foundation and what you guys do to help strike out cancer. Thank we'll take a break. Much. Overtime is next.
For decades, the Pro Tennis Tour has made an annual stop in Memphis. Yes, the name of the event has changed over the years, along with ownership in the venue, the Racquet Club. But change is part of life, and when it comes to pro tennis in Memphis, many would say it simply has evolved. But the reality is the event has lost fans, and the sport has lost the big American draws that we witnessed for years upon years. There was even plenty of concerned fans who felt the event may leave the city. Well, enter new local ownership and the assistance from the U.S. Tennis Association, who will partner on the tournament, which is slated for February of next year. The newly named Memphis Open also has a new tournament director. And the hope is new blood coupled with strategic changes will be the shot in the arm the tournament needs. So I think we all understand that the success of any sport is dependent upon a really viable professional game. We understand that and we think we have an obligation as the national governing body of tennis to ensure that not only the U.S. Open prospers, that professional tennis in the U.S. prospers, and in particular that professional tennis in Memphis and the Mid-South prospers. Uh, a professional game energizes our fans, it energizes kids, uh, it gets our players excited, and it also provides great role models. So uh, we, we understand that. We also understand that we have to be connected to the community. And we are so proud to be partnering with the Racquet Club, Club of Memphis, Steve uh, Valentine and Dabney Collier. Uh, we're very excited about the partnership we're going to have uh, going forward. Our mission is simple, to promote and develop the growth of tennis across the board. We're in tennis from the grassroots to the greatest stage in the world in tennis, the U.S. Open, and we're so proud now to have the Memphis Open under the USTA umbrella. 2014 has been a watershed year for our local ownership group. Earlier this year, uh, my uh, other managing partner of our group, uh, Dabney Kyrie and I, led our group to purchasing out the uh, portion of the racket club here that we did not own. So now we can, we can say to everybody in the community that our local ownership group uh, owns the 100% uh, of the racket club. So we're, we're happy about that. We think this uh, institution has a long history in Memphis and has a bright future. So we were very happy to see that happen. When it came to the tournament, Dabney and I wanted to be thoughtful about it and make sure that uh, whatever we would do would position the tournament uh, here in Memphis for a long future. Fortunately, we uh, uh, came across uh, this organization called the USTA and uh, were able to sit down with them very quickly last spring and really align the goals of, uh, of our group here locally and the mission that Gordon just spoke about uh, that, that, they, uh, that they drive on a national and world basis. And so uh, we were able to put that partnership together last spring and uh, throughout the spring and the summer, I've been working to get to this point uh, today. The tournament interest has waned a little bit in the Memphis community, and, and that's for a number of reasons. But I don't want to spend time dwelling in the past. I want to look toward the future. And I think what's important to know is that this is a new day for tennis in Memphis. The fan base is here. The enthusiasts are here. It can be where it used to be. We just have to reignite that passion that I know lies in this community. I've come at a time where we'll be climbing up a hill for a little while, and, and I think that I'm prepared to embrace that challenge. I, that's probably why the USTA singled me out for this. I've, I've got an ability to get people fired up, and I, I plan to do that in this community. We've done a lot of physical improvements to the club uh, to position the club to be really a part of the fabric of Memphis for the long term and it's exciting because now it's a local focus um, and we can do things looking for the long term and it's really a civic thing for our local ownership group. We really think this is important for Memphis and it's really an important part of the fabric of East Memphis. We think that long term uh, having local ownership really makes that our, our, our focus on the community stronger than it's ever been. The Memphis Tigers men's hoop squad opened up the regular season this past Tuesday and was manhandled by 11th ranked Wichita State 71-56 in a game played in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Sophomore Nick King led the Tigers with 16 points and 7 rebounds. Memphis committed 24 turnovers in the contest. The Tigers will look to even their mark on Monday when they host Prairie View A&M at FedEx Forum. Now speaking of the forum, the Memphis Grizzlies have now won 20 straight regular season home games after whipping up on the Houston Rockets Monday night. The Grizzlies entered Wednesday night's game in Toronto, sporting an NBA best mark of 10-1. and 
And finally, the Memphis Tigers football team is 7-3 and three and 5-1 and one and first place in the American Conference after knocking off Tulane last Saturday in New Orleans. Memphis has won four straight for the first time since 2003 and will host South Florida this Saturday at 3 p.m. And that'll do it for now. Remember, you can see any of our previous shows by heading to our website at WKNO.org and clicking on KNO Tonight. Next week will be our Thanksgiving show, and we'll chat with University of Memphis women's basketball coach Melissa McFerrin. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO.